Hello everyone and welcome to a Proven Gamer Review. We are covering Broken Pieces, played on the PS5. This game was developed by Elsewhere Experience and published by Freedom Games. It is a third-person psychological thriller taking place in a French coastal village somehow outside of the flow of time. What I want to do tonight, guys, is I want to come together with you and I want to talk about this game. Um, I read the synopsis on the game. Uh, this game has a lot of really cool things that um, really appealed to me uh, as a video game fan. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break things down in categories. I'm going to talk to you guys um, in a very uh, relaxed, open form, resident Daryl way of doing things. Okay, so uh, for starters, um, it is a third person fixed camera angle game. So this is uh, especially exciting for me because I enjoy these type of games. Now, this is not everyone's cup of tea, but what the game does that's different than other games like it is it has a optional camera view. So you can click R1 or in, in it's for Xbox players, RB. Uh, and you can change the perspective of the camera. So as you're navigating in an area where the camera doesn't necessarily give you the full view of the room, you can change that very quickly. Uh, and in, I'm, I'm going to uh, call out to other games and other movies and things that, that this game reminded me of. Uh, and uh, one of the things that this game reminds me of a lot is Resident Evil Code Veronica. Uh, one of the things that Code Veronica did for the Resident Evil series that was very different than the games that came out previous was that the camera would sometimes follow you uh, down a corridor. Um, it, sometimes the camera would pan out a little bit. Uh, it wasn't static. It wasn't like a stationary fixed camera that didn't move. Um, and this game, this game does that a good bit, and it's very, very interesting. So, uh, a little light on the action, if I, if I'm being honest, uh, but overall, um, a very enjoyable experience. Now, so what I want to do is I'm going to kind of break things down. Graphically, the game uh, it doesn't look bad. It's a, uh, it's, it's not smooth all the time. There are some texture pop-ins and things of that nature. I did play on PS5. And uh, it was, you know, it looked good overall. Uh, the character models. Um, didn't change a ton, but I mean, really, there's not a ton of variety. You're following one character. Her name is Elise. And essentially, everyone is gone. If you uh, want to liken it to everybody's gone to the rapture, very similar in tone where, you know, there's, there's, you're pretty much the one character. Now, and the thing that's different about this game than those games or that game in particular is there is um there's these tapes you know you you find these 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 cassette tapes and you listen to them in your cassette tape player and that tells you a lot of the story and a lot of what's going on as far as the voice acting goes because you don't get a lot of different characters a lot of different interaction with other characters the voice acting is pretty crucial and it's done very well um all of the characters were very well acted out including your main character and all of the tapes were very very interesting it told a lot of the story a lot of the lore and the the setting because you're in this small French uh, fish fisherman's town, yeah, so it's a very, uh, very quiet little setting. Uh, uh, quite nice, actually. Um, so uh, when it comes to the you know the interactions with other characters, you know the only thing you really interact with is these little ghost characters that pop up occasionally. So uh, to get and give you a little bit of a background on what's going on, you're in this little fisherman's town, and it's very post-apocalyptic in the sense that everyone's gone. Uh, Elise constantly refers back to her fiance Pierre. Uh, she reflects back on things that they did together, and she reflects on the music that he wrote for her. And so, as you go through the game, you find these tapes and these various things that are that that the people are leaving, and and there's researchers and there's spies and there's this cult, uh, and and you get a big picture of what's happening through these files and through these tapes. Again, a call back to your Resident Evils, things of that nature. I would also liken this game a lot to your Silent Hills in the sense that the the tone is set a lot by the atmosphere, uh, very, very alone, very quiet at times. Um, there's a little bit of ambient music from time to time that kind of ramps up a little bit of tension. But for the most part, you don't interact with a lot of enemies and you don't interact with a lot of true horror uh, situations. What you do is, is is more suspense and it's more thriller. So like you think something's going to happen. There's a buildup where it feels like, oh, this is the part where the jump scare happens. Uh, 
but those things are those things really don't don't happen that the ambience and the creepy nature of the setting is very enjoyable but it never really ramps into a full-blown horror experience as a matter of fact it's more of a mystery it's more of a thriller uh like i said before there's this cult that's kind of set into saint uh exile or exhale uh saint sale this particular town and they are very much the It seems like the cult has taken over. You're almost waiting to find out if the cult has killed everyone in the town or if they're responsible for why everyone's missing. Uh, While you're trying to unravel what exactly happened and why it is that you are the only one still left behind. Uh, Very rapturistic, you know, very like, oh, I'm the only one left. Uh, Now your character, uh, Elise, she has this little moonstone bracelet, and that seems to be the source of her power and and what allows her to uh, have contact with these ghost creatures, what protects her home, because there's a lot of these stones under her home. Um, and you, you know, when it comes to combat, there is a, you do have a pistol, like there is a little bit of a, of a repel power and you can use this moonstone to create a storm, um, to solve puzzles and, and, but the combat is very, very limited. You can't just draw your pistol and use it very often. Um, ammo, you craft ammo and craft different types of ammo, but you really don't interact with enough enemies from my experience playing and, and completing the game to really ever warrant needing a ton of ammo. Uh, it really seemed like, uh, you know, like it's a, there's a crafting system in there, but you just, you really don't need it. It just it seemed unnecessary in my opinion. Now, when it comes to puzzles, this game is basically puzzles on puzzles on puzzles. So if you're into puzzles and backtracking in the vein of the Resident Evil style games, then you're greatly you're going to enjoy this game uh, it, because because it, it is it does that a lot. There's a lot of backtracking and there's a lot of puzzle solving. In a Metroidvania sense to where you have to have a piece to go do this thing to do this thing. And so you have to go from one side of the map to unlock something to get on the other side of the map. And uh, and you have to switch between the time frames and the seasons, essentially, because you can what's what the impression I get was you can kind of skip to the future and everything's iced over. And therefore, you can navigate around the environment to unlock puzzles, and then you can flip back to your sunny present day. Um, again, the environments are, are are very it's very pretty. It's a nice little fisherman's town, and I know I've said that before, but it's it's a it's a nice little setting. You you spend some time in a beach, you spend some time in a lighthouse. This lighthouse seems to have been kind of worked up by some sort of military group or some sort of science scientist group. Um. There's a handful of various scenery changes based on the part of the island that you're on, uh, and everything looks looks pretty good. So uh, graphically, the game looks good. Sound wise, sound design wise, it's good. Um, you know, from the waves and the ocean and the wind blowing, and there's times where you go into these little corridors, and the wind will change and almost gets very creepy and very intense sounding. Uh, a little bit of ambient music from time to time. And then when you find these tapes, there are some acoustic songs and some singing. So as far as sound design goes, it is very, very, very control-esque in the sense that there's times where large bass drops and things happen as uh, more of the supernatural things settle in. So again, I'd said I'd call back to a handful of different franchises, things to kind of grab a hold of because they, they they very much remind me of these particular things. So very, very interesting when it comes to that. As far as gameplay goes, uh, you, you puzzle solving, you know, there's, there's a dodge mechanic. There's a, you know, your, your storm mechanic where you can use your moonstone to turn on a storm. It is lacking in the sense that there is not a ton to do. It's a lot of walking, running, and backtracking. So, uh, and when it comes to gameplay, what it does, it does it well enough, but there's not a ton there to grab onto. I spent about nine and a half, ten hours playing the game, and a lot of that is because I got lost going from section to section in the map because there's certain doors that need certain pieces to unlock in your inventory system. It doesn't allow you to carry everything at one time. You have smaller items, key items, uh, resourceful items. You have your pistol, your ammo, and then you have your heavy items where you can hold one heavy item at a time. So sometimes that's an axe to cut down a tree. Sometimes that's an axe to cut down some boards. Sometimes that is a a, a valve handle, and sometimes it is a lever to to draw, raise and draw these drawbridges. So 
Uh, when it comes to the enemy types, again, it's very limited. There's a couple ghost types that you fight, uh, and then there are some Hideo Kojima style weird creatures that kind of come in from time to time. They don't really explain who or what they are. And even the ending of the game, uh, no spoilers, but it is very left open to interpretation. So uh, the final sequence, sequence of the game, when you're waiting on the big reveal, you're left with more of a War of the Worlds situation than you are than you than you thought. Yeah. You know? So it is it is it is very interesting, very open to interpretation. I do believe the the more optional missions you do, the more optional quests that you do you get more understanding of those things. I did quite a bit of the optional quest. There were a few that I missed where I missed like certain codes. I didn't get all the power-ups for the gun because you can modify your gun based on power-ups that you find, whether it's a laser pointer or a compensator, an extended mag, things like that. And then there are um, you know certain rooms and things where you have to find codes to get into. So overall, a great experience. I quite enjoyed my time with it. It was a uh, the story was engaging enough, and the character, the voice acting was was good enough to keep me um, really interested in the story. Uh, some negatives are again the lack of of enemy interaction and really the lack of combat the game didn't even need the little bit of combat it had it was so few and far between that it really seemed almost like they threw it in there so they could say it was an action game so they could say you 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 could fight things but it really was unnecessary uh, as far as um, the main character goes and the writing goes, a lot of it was very clever. And again, for Resident Evil Silent Hill fans, there are times where you're investigating certain areas in the game. And the inner monologue where the character is constantly talking to herself, uh, and typically in a Resident Evil game, you would click on the toilet and say, I don't need this right now. Yeah, there's a there's a scene in the game where you you click on the shower and the, the character says, man, I really could use a shower once this feeling of being watched goes away. So there's a little bit of the fourth wall breaking where it's like, I understand that you're watching me as the player. Um, every now and again, she will crack a, a really uh, poor pun, a bad dad joke, essentially, about some things. Uh, with the crabs and the shrimp and, th- and stuff. And and it's very much a sense of I'm alone and I'm talking to myself to keep myself from going crazy. It di- it wasn't cringe writing in the sense that it made me want to pull my skin off or anything like that. So it was, it was enjoyable. It was cute. It, some of it was just really clever, really well done. And then there were times where you would go and you would find a file. And instead of reading the file or having the option for the player to skip the file, the character says, hey, I need to go home. I need to rest. And I need to meditate over this stuff, really study this material. And then once you wake up, she has pre she has recorded her thoughts on these tapes in with this tape recorder in her room. So you pick these up and listen to them as you're going out into uh, into the game. There are times if you do have combat and you do take damage, you can go rest on a bench and you'll rest for, quote, two hours. And you're always racing the clock to not be out in the dark. Now, one thing I did not do in the game, I didn't explore, is I didn't explore what happens if you don't go back to your home and rest and, you, and you're out in the dark. So, it is possible that there is more combat that I did not explore because I constantly played by the rules and went back into my home. The game didn't force me to ever spend any time outside of the home in the dark. So therefore, I cannot say whether or not there was a whole slew more of combat. And maybe that's what the crafting system was for, so you can stay out at night. I don't know if there's any kind of rewards for doing that. So that being said, my overall thoughts are this game is a very nice indie game with a great little story, uh, engaging enough gameplay and good enough voice acting and storytelling to keep you involved. The story is open-ended enough to where you may not necessarily see what's, what's coming but then again, it might not be the biggest payoff for the average person because they left it wide open. Didn't really explain what happened. You see a thing, you see this whole ending unfolds, and the game is over, and you're like, huh, that was interesting. So overall, I recommend it. You know, on the proven score, I would give it a seven out of ten. Um, I think that it is uh it what it does, it does well, um, well enough. I don't think that it sets any records or, or, or re- reinvents the wheel, but I think it is a fine enough game 
and I quite enjoyed my time with it, and I would recommend that you play it. And for twenty four ninety nine on the Xbox Store and twenty five dollars on twenty four ninety nine on the PlayStation Store, uh, I think that it is uh, a good a good game for the price. And it's always nice to have these little indie games doing something a little different to keep us excited and engaged. Be sure to check out Proven Gamer and all of its offerings. Go to ProvenGamer.com. Uh, check out the Trophy Horse podcast. Uh, join the Patreon, be a part of all the extra content, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All things Proving Gamer and Trivia Wars. <laughs>